Real World Mask Pro, Example 5, Masking Glass. Welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss using Mask Pro to paint away backgrounds through transparent items like glass or smoke or bubble. We're going to show you three examples in this tutorial, two of them dealing with glass and one of them dealing with particulate in the air. The techniques used on all three are very similar to each other. In this first example, we have a photograph of a wine glass against a solid white studio background. Our goal is to replace the white studio background and place the bottle into this nice vineyard scene. So let's go ahead and start out with our target layer and launch Mask Pro. When working with a transparent item like this wine glass, we're definitely going to be focused on making our separation based on color rather than on edges. Edges don't really make sense in a semi-transparent world, so we really have to paint away the transparency. The technique used for glass is very close to the technique that you'd use for working with hair or other complex foreground items. We're going to start off with the green keep eyedropper and sample colors in the image that we need to maintain. In this case, I've got a range of light to dark reds in the wine. I also have some colors that make up the glass itself. There are some gray colors in the glass. And if we go up to the top to where the bottle is at, there's also some green colors. There we go. So now we've sampled a range of keep colors. Let's do the opposite and grab the colors of our background. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to do this. Grab the red drop eyedropper. And let's grab the solid white colors out of our background. There we go. Now, once we've selected those, we'll use the magic brush tool. And let's go ahead and double click on it to apply it to our entire image. There we go. Now we can see all of the white has disappeared, but we've managed to keep all of the weight and volume of the glass, as well as all of the wine that's in it. Now there's a couple areas that we do want to clean up, right down here at the bottom of the glass, where I think we actually want to keep a little bit of that white specular highlight in there. It's a specular highlight caused by a reflection of the light source, not actually the white color of the background shining through. So I'm going to toggle over, I'm going to use my regular brush tool, set it to restore, and I'm just going to paint back in this small area here, right at the bottom of the glass, where that specular highlight should actually be. There we go. We want to maintain that. That actually should be white. All right, now let's see what this looks like against a solid color background. Here we go. Now we're comparing it to a bright orange background. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the mask itself. You can see how the mask is semi-transparent in the areas around the wine itself and in the glass. They're gray rather than completely white. All right, I think we're ready to send this back to Photoshop now. And there we go. There is our new wine glass composited into our background in a realistic looking fashion. Sometimes when I work with glass, especially when it's photographed on a white background, I'll often use this trick as well. I'll create a copy of the original layer and I'll place it at the very top of my layer stack. Then I'll change the blending mode to multiply and then reduce the opacity down quite a bit. This lets me control the density of the glass and the fluid in it to make it a little bit darker against my background if I need to. And if I want to do this in a selective fashion, I can always add a layer mask to my layer and paint it in just where I want it. All right, so there you have it. A simple way to remove a background through a glass or other transparent item and composite it into a new scene. Let's go ahead and try the same technique with another image. Here we have a fairly similar task. We've got a blue sky in the background, and in the foreground we have a green glass bottle pouring water. We want to be able to remove the blue sky but still be able to see through the water and see through the glass, but keep the green quality and luminosity of the glass as well. We're going to repeat those same techniques we did on the wine glass on this glass bottle. First, let's zoom in to about 200% and go to the neck of the bottle, use the green eyedropper, and sample out the colors that make up the green glass. I'm going to work from dark to light. I've got a dark, a medium, and a couple of light tones that make up the glass bottle, as well as a specular highlight. There we go. Now let's take a look at the water itself. The water is mostly clear, but it does have a white specular highlight, as well as a couple diffracted gray colors, and even a really, really dark blue diffracted color. Those are the colors we want to save out of the water. Alrighty. Now let's do the opposite. Let's take the red eyedropper. Let's pick the colors in the sky. 
There we go. And if you notice, there's quite a range from light to dark blue in the sky. So I'm going to sample a couple of blues out of my sky just to make sure I do a good job. Now we'll grab the magic brush tool and I'm just going to double click on it to apply it to the entire scene. There we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mask view of our scene. And you can again see the gray areas in the glass and the gray areas in the water where it's going to blend with semi-transparent action against a new background. Let's just see what that would look like against a solid color background. In this case, black, one of the most difficult colors to composite against, especially going from a light color. But you can see how you can still see all of the detail in the water, and it looks realistic, and the glass bottle is still semi-transparent, showing through the new black color in the background. We can judge the quality of our mask by using mask view or a cleanup mask view. If we look at the bottom of our scene in cleanup mask view, we can see a little bit of a blue color in the sky that we failed to select. So I'm just going to use my dropper tool, and I'm going to sample that blue color out of the sky that we missed, and I'm just going to rerun the magic brush tool by double clicking on it. This should remove a lot of that noise that we see in the bottom of the scene. There we go. And now to clean up those final little pinholes in our mask, I'll use the magic bucket tool. Double click on the magic bucket and we'll paint away that extra little bit of noise. There we go. Now we've got a nice clean composite where we could substitute in any background and have it look great. All right, let's show you one more example of dealing with transparent subjects. All right, in our last example, we're going to deal with particulate in the air. Particulate in the air works a lot like a transparent subject. In this case, we want to paint away this blue sky, but we need to keep all of the sand that's being thrown up by the four-wheeler. Let's go ahead and launch Mask Pro. And we're going to use that same technique that we've been using. First thing to do is pick the colors we want to keep. So let's zoom in to about 200% to do this. We'll use the green Keep Eyedropper and we need to sample the colors out of the sand. And they range from a light to medium to dark color of sand. There's also the colors in the four-wheeler that we need to pick as well. In this case, we have the blue of the tires, the silver chrome, the white highlights in the arm, the red flag, and that's probably a good start. All right, now we need to grab the red eyedropper, and we're going to sample out the colors in the sky that we want to remove. We have kind of a light and dark blue in the sky. There we go. Now we've defined our colors. We've selected the magic brush. Check our tool options. Make sure we're soft and less. Color decontamination is turned on. And now let's just simply double click on the magic brush tool. Now you can see in this case, it was a little aggressive and removed quite a bit of detail on the rider that we want to keep. It's easy for us to paint that information back in using the regular brush tool. In order to see what we've got, let's go ahead and turn on composite view so we can see our new sky shining through. And there we go. Let's take a little look backwards and we can see how we have the sand bouncing up into the new sky and it looks nice and realistic. Now what we need to do is just paint back in the area that we lost on the rider. A great way to do this is to zoom in on the rider and use mask view so we can actually see the outline shape of the rider. There we go. Now I'm just going to grab the regular brush tool, make sure it's set to restore mode, and now I can just paint back in the areas that I want to make sure I keep in the original scene. Keep in mind, when we paint this detail back in, it doesn't have to be 100%. It's all right if it blends with the new background a little bit. The reason we're painting this information back in is there was a lot of blue spill color from the sky on the white shirt that the rider was wearing. As well as in these chrome pipes, which are reflective, which show the color of the sky. However, because we're compositing in with the new sky, these areas of transparency will still match up and look pretty good even with the new sky. There we go. Now let's take a look at the overall scene. There we go. That looks pretty good.
we can see how our new sky composites in with the sand and blends in a nice realistic way. And you notice that there's none of the light blue halo from the original sky around the sand. That's the color decontamination in action, removing the light color of blue, making it semi-transparent so it blends in with the new sky accurately. This technique that we used here on sand is the same thing you'd use with smoke or fog as well. All right, I hope that gives you a good idea of how to use Mask Pro with transparent or semi-transparent subjects. Thanks.